Okay, from right. 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 An exhibition opens at the Olympus Gallery in London this week by one of the country's most talented and original photographers. Brian Ruffin is now 35. He left school at 16, took a routine job with British Steel and hated it. That and a broken love affair drove him to make a sudden change in his life. He began a three-year course in photography and never looked back. A staff photographer job for management today produced some quirky pictures of leading industrialists. And they led quickly to a busy life as a freelance. Some of his most impressive work is now for record sleeves. Early this year, he won the prestigious Design and Art Direction Award with this beautiful cover for a record by Depeche Mode. He received the award at a dinner-jacketed Albert Hall Gala, but he claims modestly it was a simple enough photograph to take. This uh, is a photograph that I uh, took for Depeche Mode. They asked me to do an album cover for them. The album was entitled The Broken Frame. And we took this photograph uh, out uh, in, near Stansted Airport in Essex one lunchtime. It won an award, didn't it? Yeah, uh, it won an award and uh, I had to go to the uh, Albert Hall to pick it up. And uh, so there I was on the stage in front of three and a half thousand people dressed up in the building that they happened to be in at that time. <laughs> Why did you want to go dressed as the Albert Hall? Well, apart from being a photographer, I also like performance art and I like the other arts. And uh, I just like to incorporate a little bit of my ability that I seem to possess in the other fields, in my outfits. So uh, I thought also bring a big smile, actually, on their faces. And it would cheer them up, because everyone was going on the stage in dinner suits. So why not, you know, uh, make it a party? How did you get the award? How did you get hold of it? How I, well, what happened was that I walked up next to Michael Aspel and then just put my hand up. And into my hand came a, a yellow pencil, which I then took back into the Albert Hall, which I hoped that people would look up to the roof and see coming through the roof at the same time. And I just walked off the stage. The photograph's very easy, actually, to do. I mean, any, anyone could take it. All it, need, all it needed was three simple flash guns that any amateur can buy from any photographic store and placed around the subject, one to the left. I just put my hand through my slot, one to the uh, left, one to the right, and an amber flash gun up from the bottom. And uh, just click. It just happened to be a beautiful September day that uh, there was a marvellous cloud formation in the background. It's the light going into the front. It's what you see in pre-Raphaelite or social realism painting is the, is the amount of light that you put into the front of a photograph is absolutely paramount. I like doing covers for albums for basically for one reason. People or the per people that are commissioning me just want me to just get something quite fantastical. They want the person who's buying the record to sit down, listen to the music and drift off into some other world than they are experiencing in their normal lives. So I go back home or sit down in a studio and just think of something that could bring that key to lift the people off in conjunction with the music in order to drift off into, into some dream world. First time I met Autofox, I went into the studio and I heard the the song Vienna, which became very famous, being put together. And this band actually wanted an image that was very relevant to 30s photography. They wanted a 30s feel. So therefore it was photographed in tungsten light. And it was photographed in my studio. I know bands normally spend a fortune on videos and album covers, but this in fact took 20 pounds, 28 pounds to produce. It's just two long rolls of paper, just built into mountainsides in my studio. Record sleeves are only part of his work. His strength is black and white photography, and he happily admits to the influence of Man Ray, German Expressionist cinema of the 1930s, and Hollywood silence. When I first started in the commercial world of photography, I realized that if I was going to follow the inspirations of my photographers that were before me, I would be uh, almost a uh, sort of, um, I don't know, second layer of them in a way. I felt I needed inspiration from other areas in order to my photographs to come out rather differently. So I watched a lot of silent cinema, which actually involved no speech, just involved gesticulation, movement to show emotion. And I put this back into, the, into my imagery.
music provided by Steve.